Welcome viewers to another exciting episode of Psych Insight. This is the place where we delve deep into the human psyche, understanding the hows and whys of our behavior patterns. Our mission, to view the world through the lens of psychology. If you're keen on exploring the depths of your mind, the intricate web of habits and the power of awareness, you're in the right place. Today, we're taking on an exciting journey, exploring the invisible forces that drive our daily lives. But before we dive into it, if you find this content insightful, don't forget to share it with your friends, hit the like button, and most importantly, subscribe to our channel to join our ever-growing community. Stay in the loop and get your regular dose of psychological insights right here. Now let's unravel the mysteries of our minds together. Thank you for watching and let's dive into today's topic, the power of awareness. Have you ever wondered why certain habits are so hard to break? It's like there's an invisible force driving us to repeat the same actions, often without even realizing it. This is the power of automatic behaviors, the autopilot mode of our lives. You see, when we experience something over and over, our brains start to pick up on the patterns. We learn the intricacies, the small details that hint at what's to come. These are cues, the triggers that spark our habits into action. For instance, the smell of fresh coffee in the morning might be the cue that triggers your habit of grabbing a cup and reading the paper. But here's the thing. These behaviors are so deeply ingrained in us that we don't actively think about them. They just happen. They're automatic. And that's where the challenge in breaking bad habits lies. Because to change a habit, we first need to be aware of it. We need to recognize the cues that are triggering these automatic behaviors. Think of it as shining a light on the hidden corners of your habits. It's about bringing the unconscious into consciousness, turning the automatic into the deliberate. It's about understanding that our brains are always looking for patterns, for cues, and that these cues are the starting point of our habits. But don't be disheartened. Recognizing these cues is the first step towards changing our habits. It's about understanding that our brains are not our enemies, but our allies. They're just doing what they've been trained to do through repeated experiences. So if we want to break a bad habit, we need to start by becoming aware of the cues that trigger it. We need to shine a light on these triggers to understand them, and then we can start to change our automatic behaviors. And remember, this is not about blaming ourselves for our bad habits. It's about understanding the power of our brains, the power of cues, and the power of awareness. Because to change our habits, we first need to shine a light on them, becoming aware of the cues that trigger them. So, you want to start a new habit, but you're not sure where to begin? Well, let's delve into the concept of implementational intention. This is essentially a plan that you make beforehand about when and where to act. When it comes to starting new habits, two of the most common cues are time and location. Think about it. When you wake up in the morning, it's not motivation that gets you out of bed and brushing your teeth. It's the automatic cue of time and location. The alarm rings, you're in your bedroom, and you know it's time to rise and shine. So if you want to start a new habit, say, going for a run every morning, state when and where you're going to do it. I will run in the park at six in the morning is far more effective than just saying, I will run every day. What most people lack isn't motivation, it's clarity. Now let's talk about habit stacking. This is a strategy you can use to group habits together. It's like creating a domino effect of good habits. Let's say you wanna read more, you could stack this habit onto your existing habit of drinking coffee in the morning. So your new habit plan is, when I have my morning coffee, I will also read a chapter of a book. You're using the momentum of one habit to kickstart another. Remember, humans are creatures of habit. We often decide what to do next, based on what we just did. By connecting your habits, you're creating a flow of productive behaviors that can help you reach your goals. So to start a new habit, be clear about your implementational intention. Decide on the when and where. Then, try habit stacking. Use the energy of an existing habit to propel you into your new one. Remember, clarity is key. Knowing when and where to perform your habit significantly increases your chances of success. Did you know that your environment plays a significant role in your habits? That's right. It's not just about willpower or motivation. The world around you can make or break your routines. Think about it. Our behaviors often change based on where we are. The actions we take each day are usually not driven by conscious choice, but because they are the most obvious option in our environment. This means that the cues around us have a significant impact on our actions. Small shifts in what you see can lead to big changes in what you do. So, how can we use this knowledge to our advantage? 
One way is to surround ourselves with productive cues. If you want to read more, place a book on your bedside table. If you're trying to eat healthier, keep a bowl of fresh fruit on your kitchen counter. These visual prompts make it easier to adopt the habits we desire. But it's not just about adding cues. It's also about creating an environment that supports your goals. In other words, setting up your environment for success. This might mean designating specific areas for specific activities. For instance, your desk could be your focus zone, your couch, your relaxation spot, and your bedroom, your sleep sanctuary. This way, every space or device becomes part of a habit and thought process. However, it's crucial to avoid mixing contexts. If you're used to watching TV in bed, it can be harder to fall asleep when you actually want to rest. The place where you sleep shouldn't be the place where you consume entertainment. The same principle applies to your devices. Use your phone for social media, your computer for work, and your tablet for reading. By keeping these contexts separate, you can avoid confusion and make habit formation more straightforward. Remember, habits are often associated with certain contexts. By being mindful of these associations, we can set ourselves up for success. Your environment shapes your habits. Make sure it's shaping them in a way that supports your goals. Ever wonder why some people seem to have more self-control than others? It's not that they are superhuman or possess some magical willpower. They've simply mastered the art of managing their environment and the cues they expose themselves to. This is where the concept of cue-induced wanting comes into play. It describes how certain cues can trigger our unwanted habits, leading us astray from our desired path. For example, if you're trying to cut down on unhealthy snacking, having a candy jar on your desk is a cue that's likely to sabotage your efforts. Disciplined people understand this. They don't rely on sheer willpower to resist the candy jar. They remove it from their desk altogether. By reducing exposure to such cues, we can significantly weaken the hold of unwanted habits. Remember, self-control is not about willpower. It's about being smart with your environment and the cues you expose yourself to.